For the last three weeks, you give us company learning about neuroimaging modalities, MRI and 2 EG study. So I hope you learn enough about neuroimaging techniques and studies associated with that. Um, so we're going to close the chapter of neuroimaging and open a new chapter uh, that we work in our lab. And that's all about data science, which the data is coming from COVID related studies. Uh, COVID-related data. Um, I think these data are the most important data these days to work on uh, because um, the world was not ready for the global pandemic. And the more we understand this disease and the impact of it from the physiological, psychological, environmental factors, um, the better uh, we'll we're going to deal with the next pandemic, either this some variant of COVID or something totally different. Uh, so that's why all the data science related projects in my lab, uh, the data is all about COVID-19. So um, I am going to um, pass the mic to Kirtana and Yukta and uh, here you go. Hi everyone, I'm Kirtana from COVID Fatigue. And, and my name is Yekta Chiteri. Oh, wait, sorry, one second. Okay, so going over the purpose of our study, the problem we were given was that like long COVID, otherwise known as COVID fatigue, can leave lasting effects on those infected. A study by the American Medical Association showed that 87% had at least one symptom nearly two months later, and more than half still had fatigue. And many of these symptoms get stronger the older the person is. So... Our approach is that we are going to be having people fill out a questionnaire that investigate post-COVID fatigue. So they take this questionnaire after they've had COVID-19. And basically we can identify their long-term symptoms and we can further look into the prevalence of certain symptoms of brain fog in deficit cognitive function and body fatigue through physical symptoms, as well as potential demographics and related information that can influence the timeline of recovery. So some important definitions to understand, to really understand what our research is about are, first of all, long COVID, which is any symptoms that are a result of COVID-19 that have lasted longer than when the infection is present. The second definition that is important to know is brain fog. And this includes characteristics like confusion, lack of focus, forgetfulness, and slower processing of information. And lastly, fatigue, which is just tiredness or feeling weak as a result of something. And our study is different from other studies you may see about this because we're using both cognitive and physical symptoms to learn more about COVID fatigue. So here's our timeline of how our research has progressed over the years. So this research study was initially started in the summer of 2022 with a COVID fatigue literature survey. We then moved on to designing a brain fog assessment in the same time period and also started validating a scoring system in during fall of 2022. We recently started our pilot study in quality control in the spring of 2023, and we're going to be initiating data collection um, sometime soon and then finishing data collection in the summer of the same year. Oh, sorry. So this is the process that we use to make our questionnaire. The first thing is that we picked questions and we chose questions from specific categories that we'll get more into later. But just a few examples for right now is breathlessness, cranial nerve dysfunction, and loss of taste. And then we picked the questions from each specific category and we used all the members of our team to do this. Then we also took a look at demographics and we chose questions for the questionnaire regarding race, ethnicity, and gender. And then we uh, tested out the questionnaire with our own sample data. So if we take a look here, this is just some example of sample data from our questionnaire when we were making it. So we have two main question categories in our questionnaire. The first is physical symptoms, which includes things like fatigue, sleep loss, and breathlessness. And the second category are cognitive symptoms, which include things like stress, working memory, and depression. 
So when we were given out like the, or when we were making the questionnaires, we had two op uh, options for the platforms we we're going to use, Jotform or Gorilla. And for Jotform, it's basically like a serving platform we built our questionnaire through. So it's what we ended up picking. And it's HIPAA compliant for data to be stored, processed, and analyzed with respect to patient privacy guidelines. And the questions can be divided into sections, but they don't allow for conditional paths. Gorilla is another platform, and it's EU GDPR compliant, which is stricter than HIPAA. And participants are sent down a conditional path of questions based on their answers, and it allows for integrated cognitive tests. So we were originally interested in, in Gorilla, but we ultimately chose Jotform over Gr Gorilla because with Gorilla, it costs money to send the questionnaire to each participant, and we weren't able to do that. So within our questionnaire, we have two types of consent, long consent and short consent. So long consent includes all of the information about our survey and what we expect from the participants. And we made sure to include any risks, participant rights, how to revoke participation, and more. And the short consent is basically just a summary of what the long consent included. And within the short consent, there was a place for the participants to write their signatures so that we make sure that they've read over everything and are on the same page about this study. And when making these consent forms, we got the help of other teams in the Johanneke and Neuro Lab using their templates and what their consent forms looked like to make our consent forms. So let's take a look at the, our preliminary pilot studies. So the first thing we had each pilot participant fill out is an eligibility form. And basically we had them go through a set of questions to see if they're eligible to take our questionnaire or not. Or not. If they were, then they would receive an email that leads them to the actual questionnaire. And then this next thing we had them do is the consent forms like you talked about like the slide before. So after the, the eligibility form, they would sign the consent forms needed to participate in our study. And then they actually filled out the questionnaire. And after that, we had them fill out a feedback form so we can get feedback uh, based on their experience doing our questionnaire. And this helped us improve our study. So our research so far hasn't been entirely smooth. We've actually faced some challenges. So the first challenge that we faced was with scoring. So through our trials, we noticed that our team wasn't aligned on the same scoring system. And this created a really big issue for us because we realized that we weren't able to have reliable results if everyone was on a different page about our scoring system. But we were eventually able to fix this issue through communication. And we also redid some of our scoring for our pilot participants to make sure the scoring system is um, the same for everything. And the second challenge we faced was with the questions on the questionnaire. So some of the feedback that we got with our feedback form, um, our participants that filled it out said that there was the order of the questions was a little confusing, and some of the questions were misworded a little bit, which also made it confusing to read. So let's take a look at our future. So our participant goal is to have around 250 participants from all over America, and we want a very diverse group of people so we can, um, so the, the data isn't biased toward a certain group of people. And our end goal is to have data collection completed by the end of summer of 2023. And this is what our plan to do. This is our plan of what we're going to be doing with the data. So once we have all the data, we want to find connections between participants, see how it relates to the brain, further understand patterns between COVID uh, between long COVID and the demographic information, and then publish papers with our results. And we wanted to give a special thanks to the Johanneke Neurolab for giving us this opportunity to participate in this research study and also to our other teammates who have worked alongside us to make this research study come as far as it has today. Uh, these are our references and then this is just like the place we got our slides template. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Thank you, team. So yes, all the data associated, all, uh, all the studies that uh, somehow associated with data collection are pretty challenging, um, designing assessments. Uh, so just to let you guys know that I think your team collect um, got a lot uh, around 25 assessment, both physical as well as uh, cognitive, right? And merge them to one assessment, one questionnaire. Yeah. So. 
Um, these questions are not random questions. Uh, these are coming from standalone assessment that, um, you know, um, measures some factors like fatigue, uh, shortness of breath, uh, breath um, taste, loss of taste, uh, and smell, and on the cognitive part, um, more like uh, uh, more like a memory and uh, help me think. Um, what else? Depression, anxiety, fibromyalgia. So they have we have standard assessment for all of them. Team has studied all this assessment and made their own version of questionnaire. So I think that oh. is like the sweet spot of this study to design that very unique questionnaire, and then. It has another aspect, which is measuring the timeline, how long this um, symptoms last. So this study is very unique, unlike any other COVID-related study that they're studying brain fog, because not only a major in physiological, but also cognitive and the timeline. So it's a multidimensional study. I want to thank you, Tim, for uh, doing an amazing work. Thank you, Kirtana and Yuksa, for awesome presentation. They are open for question and answer. And thank you all. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, I have some questions. Are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, this is Bharat. And, you know, but yeah, I was uh, supposed to ask about the uh, population and sample. Uh, as uh, you mentioned that we collected sample from all over the U.S. Uh, so uh, do you have any idea how many, uh, what was the population there? And then a sample, you took 250 up from them, yeah? Oh, so our sample data was actually just between our team here. I'll go back to the slide. But our sample data was just between the team to test out our questionnaire. Um, uh -huh. Like, this is how it looked like. And we basically gave everyone like a random subject ID, but our actual data hasn't been collected yet. And we plan to do that. We're gonna be starting that very soon. So uh, so you sent the email for them to get feedback uh, for your data, yeah? Yeah, so those were our pilot oh. studies. So to initiate our pilot pilot study, we sent out each pilot participant a little question, um, a little uh, form where they can fill out if they're eligible or not. And then, uh -huh. then they filled out like the consent forms and the questionnaires. But that isn't for actual data collection. Those are just uh -huh. pilot studies. So we're going to start the actual um, collecting data information really soon. But we haven't done that yet. Okay. So uh, you just send the sample questions and then uh, later uh, you test it before getting the detailed data, yeah? Mm -hmm. You you just test your uh, questionnaire whether it is uh, useful or maybe the participant uh, you know this people they can answer it you know otherwise it's very hard to get the answer online you know some people might not have time or maybe they don't understand what are the questions you know yeah. it is difficult to, to get these uh, samples from the big population. So, uh, yes, sir, ma'am, uh, is it valid for 250 a number of samples to analyze and make conclusion? Yes, 250 is actually a big amount of data. That's a good amount oh, of data. Uh, so um, just to um, clear about the pipeline of data collection, at least at um, my lab, we start, uh, when we design a questionnaire, I'll ask within the team to test it among themselves. Oh, uh, the they of what they do. And that is called sample. So uh -huh. with the sample data, they learn how to score. Mm -hmm. And they learn that what are the data they get is the qualitative, quantitative, and that will help them before they collect the data, they... Uh -huh they uh, score, they learn the scoring and scoring in advance because you don't want to collect 250 data and then later on, you don't know how to analyze it out or what oh, is the pipeline. So that's why they, they first go with sample data, uh -huh. uh, analyze the sample data. Now, once it is completed, they'll go with the pilot study. Pilot, pilot study is well. wow. are real participant, but the data will not be included as a oh. part of that 250. So the pilots are just adults filling up this one, but the difference is that the pilot 
participants will fill up the feedback questionnaires. So now we run the quality control of hearing what are the feedbacks that uh, pilot people are going to give, how long it's gonna take, do they have anything that we can improve prior to moving uh, oh. to the, uh, the final participant. So we keep on customizing, making it better um, and improve our study before we go for that 250. So once the sample study is over, pilot study is oh. over, we'll go for the real data collection. And collection. 250 is a very good number for this study. Good number, I see. Oh, wonderful. And so what, what, what do you expect? The, uh, you know, the final result, there must be some conclusion. So uh, uh, who is going to benefit from that conclusion? Maybe doctor can get advice from you guys what to do next year for those patients. Yeah, maybe. We want to try to draw out patterns uh, between uh -huh. long COVID using our demographic data and timelines to just learn more about it. Uh -huh. yeah. And side effect, yeah? Mm -hmm. What happened in the near future? Living, yeah, it is very useful for the society, I think. Yeah, especially because we're going through like COVID-19 right now. Right, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Very clear. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a really, so I have a question. I may have missed it, but actually two. So one was, um, how did you get the form out there? And like, how did you find people who wanted to participate? And the number two was, how... Like, because some things can be kind of subjective, like how did, and especially because it's like other people filling out the form about themselves and like how they feel and sometimes like, and if there are open-ended questions, how did you like quantify the more qualitative data? Mm -hmm. So to answer the first question, our pilot like participants was basically like we, uh like we had people in mind that we would know and then we would send them a link through our, um our team uh, account, like we wouldn't like specify who it was. We would give we would we would give them a random ID, and then for the second question, so our questionnaire is based basically like there's like a symptom, and then you answer like how long you had that symptom. So it's not really like how much pain like you how much pain you had for that symptoms. It was more like the timeline. So it's not really subjective because a person can't have like six weeks of pain and three weeks of pain you know it's like it's like a or b like you can't have Got it a. okay that makes sense thank you i i think your question for uh, the first question is that how we are going to have an outreach uh it's just um there are multiple ways they uh, team has made a flyer uh they get a permit to distribute the flyer in their neighborhood uh there's the amazon mechanical turk um, they are just like distributing on uh, platforms that uh, people they know and just distributing the words by just, you know, uh, hey, you know, can you pass it through your colleagues or friends or family? Uh, so it's just like by, um, uh, you know, uh, by words is the number one. Second thing is Am uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk. And the third one is uh, True Flyer. And the team has already made their flyer and they're ready for distribution. So it has a QR code that takes them to the eligibility question. So there is eligibility question in order to participate in our study. First, you have to have been infected with COVID-19. So um, yes, so uh, I think Tim didn't mention about it, but uh, there is eligibility criteria. You cannot be like pregnant during the time of COVID. You're not supposed to have any long lasting disease apart from COVID in order to participate in this study. How do you know if they're lying or not? Like what if someone just like, hey, I'm just gonna fill out this form just for funsies and I'll make up a bunch of information. I mean, it is with data collection, right? So you, you cannot, uh, that's called with um, census too. Like how do you uh, how do you make sure that people when they fill up census about their income or household or anything they're telling the truth right so it's just when it comes to questionnaire or research study uh, study has shown that when people are filling up information that's research related they feel more obligated they either won't participate or if they participate they, they had a feeling that they are helping science. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. For jokes. So uh, they either, it's exactly like binary. They either 
don't participate or if they participate, they have a sense of their helping science. So they are trying to make it as, um, you know, as great as possible, hopefully. Another thing I wanted to mention is that part of our eligibility form has a question about pre-existing conditions related or like similar to the symptoms we mentioned in our questionnaire. So then it like if they do have pre-existing conditions like that, then they're not eligible. So that should like um, help like not get any like um, outline outliers in the data. So more questions. We have four more minutes before we wrap up this presentation from my team. So if you have any question, come out of the mute and ask your question. Thank you, team. Brilliant work. Thanks, uh, Yukta and Kirtana, on behalf of the rest of the team. This is an amazing study. I wish you best of luck.